we, we like Africa. I think um, listening to that talk, um, I think last year 75 or 80 percent of our revenues were from Africa. So um, maybe we should fly our planes elsewhere. Um, thank you, David, for uh, inviting Arkex again, again uh, here to uh, finding petroleum. Part of this talk is about is is more of a commercial and business development talk, and um, got the idea of it from Anel Bay, who is the exploration director from Marathon, and we've been we've done a lot of work um, for Marathon and their partners in the East African Rift, and. She described uh, in a conference at the Oil Council conference in uh, Paris as that whole um, East African play as being a technology play, um, taking advantage of new technology. So I asked the question, you know, how, how does new technology get adopted um, within the oil and gas um, industry? And I know. David, you've talked a little bit about this at various times, the uptake of 3D seismic and 30 years of, of adoption. Um, is this the, uh, there we go. So I thought I'd start with a little cartoon about adoption of new technology from a 15th century uh, um, example of adopting new technology in, uh, in, that, in that part, in, in that time frame. It's not a lot different today. It is, um, it's a tough road, tougher than I thought when I started with ArcX uh, eight years ago. Um, so 10 years on, ArcX is, is 10 years old uh, this year. Um, we are still considered a new technology company. Um, uh, we've flown millions of kilometers of data, um, and, but for many e &P companies, uh, FTG technology and gradiometry, and I understand Darren gave a Nice talk today on that. Um, adoption is still um, a, a, an issue for um, for ArcX and others that are deploying this technology into the uh, into the uh, workflow. A few of the reasons why it's taken long: there is a reluctance for many companies to be the first ones to adopt something something new and different. Um, Short-term financial pressures are obviously always there. Usually, when you say new technology, um, uh, it sometimes is uh, uh, seen as more expensive, um, but it's, uh, you have to take that into the context of the whole exploration workflow. Um, and something that John mentioned was um, the delivery of the product and, and the lack of understanding of our clients. And a lot of this is down to the, the deliverer, the supplier of this new technology and being able to package it and offer up an answer product. And a lot of that is down to, uh, down to the technology companies. Um, so the challenge for, for um, uh, a small technology company uh, like ArcX is to show the value, is how to, how to simplify that and deliver that message. Um, there does need to be a compelling need, um, a business need for that, and I'm going to show an example of how, how gradiometry has changed how you explore for oil and gas in, in East Africa, but also some other places. You need to show the answer products in a very simple form. It needs to be uh, simplified and easy to access for, for our customers. And you need a champion. You need somebody who is going to adopt um, and uh, take up um, and be willing to take that, uh, that, initial, that initial risk. So the example I'm going to show um, is in East Africa. Um, we've been working quite a lot in Ethiopia, so I'm happy you didn't mention that in your, uh, in your talk. Uh, um, it's a nice place to be. Um, but a very large area, lots of, lots of basins to scan. The block sizes in, in that part of the world are 15 to 20,000 square kilometers. And the challenge is how do you screen that in a, in a safe, secure, secure way, um, efficiently, um, environmentally responsibly, um, and also cost effectively? So <clears throat> these are, I'm going to show two areas. This is this is, uh, real, this is real data um, that I'm going to show. Um, a traditional workflow for, this is 20,000 square kilometer block. Um, a conventional or traditional way of exploring for large areas in, in, in lots of parts of, uh, of central, central Africa is to do some kind of remote sensing, um, understand where your basin is. John did a little bit of this where you 
put your, locate your sm small amount of 2D seismic uh, into a large, large area. You do a little, even smaller amount of 3D seismic. You drill, and over the span of five or six years, which is a typical exploration license period, um, you would hope to be able to come to some decision on whether or not you're going to continue on with the block, whether or not you have a discovery, try and get a farm in. The, 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 um, a, a new or more optimum way of doing that is to start with something that is more precise, better data. John said better data um, is there all the time now. It's how you deploy it and how you use it. So that same area that you saw before with conventional <coughs> airborne gravity, here's, here's a gradiometry image of that 20,000 square kilometers. And you can see that the basin is much more defined there. You would now put your seismic lines in a, in a, in a different location. You might do less seismic, actually. And certainly in East Africa, um, um, you would, the, the pattern there is to even be able to drill off of full tensor gradiometry data 2D seismic data, um, understand whether or not you have a discovery, and then right size your 3D seismic. And that is the, that's the workflow that is happening now in, in a lot of the acreage uh, in Kenya, in Tanzania, um, certainly further down the rift. That is, this is the way that you can, that you can cost effectively shorten your, your time to a decision point. Um, so that is, that's, the, that's the value that new technology can bring. Um, um, other places where we feel the technology can, can be adopted in a similar way is in the Arctic. Obviously, um, access to the Arctic is difficult right now. Um, uh, certainly, there are times of the year when you can operate there. There's an environmental issue for sure there. So um, we certainly feel that deploying new technology into that part of the world is, is a key to being able to cost effectively unlock and be, and be very targeted in how you carry on with, your, with, the, um, with the technologies that you deploy after you deploy gradiometry. And the other area that we're focused on is, um, is shale, uh, shale gas. We're working quite a lot in the U.S., it's a different application of the technology. It's not as simple as some of the some of the images that you've seen there in the East African Rift, but it's still surprisingly difficult to. And you you would think that the U.S. is covered with um, good uh, 3D seismic data, but that's just not the case. And it's more and more difficult to permit that that acreage. So, and there are lots of areas where where there are shale plays. The Marcellus is one where where 3D seismic is getting harder and harder and harder to acquire, and gradiometry is being used, uh, at least initially, in order to pattern drill, to help, help with the drilling uh, locations, and also help, uh, help locate the 3D seismic. So it's a few areas that ARCX are, are targeting um, for the application of the technology. And to get back to, to a point that John made earlier, um, some of the things that ARCX are working on, um, two particular things. Um, one is uh, usability of the data. How can an exploration manager uh, who is looking at seismic, seismic is, going to, is always the key to, to uh, an exploration workflow. How can you use other sets, other data sets in a simple manner? Because right now it is a cumbersome um, application of other, t other technologies. I don't think, I think most exploration um, folks would agree that multiple measurements is a good thing to have. And the key is how you can do that in a, in a simple manner. And, and we'll be launching some software, some interpretation software here this year that hopefully will put FTG data and other potential field data, gra uh, gravity data, um, into a Petrel workflow where you're able to look at potential field data very easily alongside, alongside your, uh, your, seismic, um, your seismic data. And that's the key is being able to move horizons back and forth between, uh, between your 3D seismic and, and potential field data that you have. And the other, the other um, 
application that uh, ArcX is working on, and it's some years away now, is the next generation technology um, for measuring uh, very precisely the gravi gravity field. Um, ArcX has exclusivity in um, the next Lockheed Martin instrument, which will be four times better resolution than the current uh, instrumentation. And hopefully the things that we've learned over the last 10 years in deploying new technology into the, uh, into the industry, when, when the EFTG comes out in two or three years, um, we will have products, methodologies, and workflows that, uh, that fit seamlessly into an explorationist um, program. And that is my talk. Okay. And Thank you very much. Yeah.